Um, and if we want to go ahead and uh, we can do a popcorn on kind of get to know you and I will start. So how popcorn works for those that don't know, um, I'll tell something about myself and then I'll popcorn over to somebody. They say how they do, they popcorn to someone else. So pretty simple. So I'm Tyler, even though my computer says Don Golden. Don Golden is our um, wonderful executive that works with COCA that set everything up. So I'm happy to use his um, account. Um, so I will change that name in a minute. Um, I am with Camp Magical Moments. Um, I just got, um, I don't know if it's a promotion, but I'm now the new art director with the camp, um, mm -hmm. as well as the IT director that I was before. Um, and in a, uh, in when needed a cabin counselor. So um, I'm also the region seven director um, of COCA which is our wonderful region. Um, and I've been serving on the board, COCA board for, I don't know, a long time, it seems like. Um, so I will popcorn over to Bridget. Hello everyone, I am Bridget Dolan. I'm the executive director of the Good Times Project uh, in Seattle, Washington. And I have been on staff for about two years here uh, and was a volunteer for eight or nine years before that. So I have done um, a lot of different things at camp and continue to do that. Whatever my camp director needs me to do, I do. And I'm going to um, pass it over to Beth. Bridget. Um, my name is Beth Jones. I am the camp director at Camp Make a Dream in Montana. Uh, I've been here for 14 years or so. Um, let's see. Um, I'm looking forward to just kind of spending some time with all of you. It's It's been lonely working in my home. So it'll be nice to connect um, with all of you and my coworkers who I have not seen in person in a while. So I will popcorn over to Becky. Um, I am also up in Seattle at the Good Times Project. I'm even wearing Good Times shirt today and sweatshirt too for, um, I am program and events manager. Is that my title yet? Um, I have been, um, a paid person of what's the word employee for like three and a half years, but had volunteered for a long, long time before that. And, um, was a camper as well. My sister had cancer. So we attended camp, um, together and then I get to now get paid to do something that I love so much. Um, I am going to be present, but I might keep my, uh, camera off um because i'm kind of trying to multitask but i'm really excited <laughs> to, to do these sessions i will pop over uh to jen because we had we we connected in um what was that thing called the three minute chat times in real coca <laughs> i can't remember the meetups yeah meet up yeah meet away meet away, oh, yeah, meet away. yeah <laughs> Thank you, Becky. I'm Jen. I am from the camper manager at Can't Make a Dream in Montana. Um, this is my, I think, fifth year as an, uh, as an employee, but I also volunteered years ago. Um, super excited to be here with you guys for the next few hours today and again tomorrow. Um, I will popcorn over to Kim. Hello, I'm Kim Belgard, and I'm the camp director for Camp Casey, Kids Against Cancer Everywhere. And this would be my, hmm, I think it's my 33rd year with Camp Casey and um, my 23rd year as director. So I did all the grunt jobs prior and I am celebrating by buying a T-bird tomorrow for my 15 years of cancer free. Oh, I'll popcorn over to Tristan. Awesome. Uh, hello, everybody. I've been here a long three weeks and one day. Um, and so I don't, <laughs> so not as long as you guys have, um, but it's great to see just everybody in the all come together. Uh, Wendy and Dr. K have shared some really great stuff about you guys. Um, but uh, yeah, I've been here for three weeks and one day. I'm the newly uh, hired camp coordinator for Camp Brigadon, um, as well as some other Sanford camps. 
uh, here in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Um, so I'm really excited to join you guys and learn all about Region 7. Um, and I'll pop corn over to Tanya. Hey everybody, Tanya, uh, can't name Cooper. Um, I have been with the Good Times Project and Camp Good Times. This will be my seventh camp season as the camp director. Uh, but likewise with my co colleagues, uh, Bridget and Becky, um, also volunteered for a number of years with the camp um, before uh, gaining an employment there. Um, yeah, just excited to see people's faces. I too agree that it's nice to um, see people outside of kind of our regular day-to-day uh, -day working from home. So thank you for letting us join and um, I'm excited to see what comes of this. Um, I'm going to pop corn too. I'm going to pronounce it Zodia. Yep, that's my name. Uh, I'm Zodia. Uh, I'm from Camp Magical Moments. I am a gopher for Camp Magical Moments. I've been for going for two years now. Uh, and this is my first ever coca. So I'm super excited to see what all the hype's about. Um, and all popcorn over to Tessa. My name is Tessa and I work at Camp Make a Dream. I am the wellness programming manager for camp and I am starting my second year. So I have only known camp during the pandemic and look forward to learning a lot from others uh, during this. So thanks. I will popcorn to Don's. Hi guys. I'm Don Golden, the director, executive director of COCA. Been doing it for a lot longer than I realized. I looked at a file the other day and it was actually dated 2010. Uh, only direct executive director for about the last five or six years. I wanted to join this because you all are my favorite people up in region seven. So uh, the only other thing I will mention is the I am looking forward to Houston this year. I think we're going to actually have a conference, right? And um, so if you all can make it, do it. I, I was talking to somebody about this the other day, and I have this, it, and it's going to happen. I know it's going to happen. We're going to walk into that hotel in Houston. It's a JW Marriott, and people will be running from one end of the lobby to the other, hugging each other just because they'll be able to see each other for the first time in years. So I'm gonna be popping on and off here. I will tell you, if anything goes wrong with this, it's all on me. Tyler relied on me to do things and it didn't work. So Tyler, I've got you covered, buddy. Uh, Jennifer, Benton, make a dream, take it. Thank you, Don. And I hope we really are your favorites. You don't just say that, but <laughs> we love you too. It's great to see everybody. Um, I'm Jennifer Benton. I'm the program director here at Can't Make a Dream. So many of my colleagues are here too. And it is nice to see some fresh and familiar faces um, for COCA or mini COCA as we used to call this, our regional conference. <laughs> Um, looking forward to the next several hours with you guys today and tomorrow. Um, I recently joined the COCA board and the secretary right now for the rest of this year. Um, but yeah, it's just nice to see everybody and interact with anyone besides my dogs and my husband for a little bit. So I will popcorn to Wendy. Technical difficulties, sorry. I'm Wendy. I've been with Camp Make a Dream. Or I want to go to Camp Make a Dream. I've not been with Camp Make a Dream. Beth's below me, so I see Camp Make a Dream. Oh, you guys, it's been a Monday. It's been a Monday. I'm with Camp Bring It On um, in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. And we are so excited that we have Tristan on board with us now. Um, so my job is normally as a child life specialist in our oncology clinic. And um, we've had one heck of a day. And so I have a few more patients I have to go out and see. So I won't be able to be with us the whole time. Um, but um, in this last year, I was the interim um, camp coordinator for all Sanford camps. And so that was challengingly, challengingly fun and draining all at the same time. So I'm thrilled that Tristan and I could team up and we can, we can trap pass the baton and 
um I'm just like you said Jen like I'm just so excited to see people like I just want to be like hi Kim hi guy you know like I just want to talk to everybody so it's so nice to see everybody thanks Tyler for all your hard work with us too right I think the last one is Kenzie go ahead Kenzie tell us about you hi I'm Kenzie Croft I'm with Camp Magical Moments and I have been with them since I was seven as a camper 14 years ago, but this is my first year doing coca. So I'm really excited to join you all and learn everything I can. All right. Well, thanks everybody. Um, just one more thing. I sent an invite to a Google um, folder. Uh, if anyone has any uh, COVID-19 uh, policies or procedures, feel free to share them into that. If you try to get on it, I think I set it up so I have to um, accept you, which I messed up. It's the first time I did that. So just be patient. I'll get that uh, acceptance sent out. So if you have anything that you'd like to share about what your camp is doing um, for COVID, uh, please feel free to share it in that folder. So I guess the time has come for us to break out. So if you are planning on joining Kim with the Camp in the Box sec, uh, session, feel free to go ahead and leave this meeting and jump over to the link that Jennifer posted. Does everyone see that link or do I need to repost it for people that came on late? And I'm gonna jump off and go start that meeting. Perfect. I'm not going to it, but I know that I did join on late and it is not in the chat for me okay so if anyone else is in that same boat okay i will just copy that over and re put it in there all right i think this looks like everyone that signed up for um, mine and Zodia's session. So just so everyone knows, Zodia is my daughter um, and she is living in Hawaii right now. So she, the time zone thing really was fun to figure out what time everything was because I got a lot of emails on, is this central time? Is it mountain time? So, um, and she's going to actually do most of the leading on this because um, her and her brothers kind of came up with our campaign that we did for our siblings camp, we did a um, session uh, that we entitled Critical Role, which if anybody's a nerd know, will know that um, Critical Role is a YouTube show or a, a streaming show, I guess it's not necessarily on YouTube, about um, voice actors that play Dungeons and Dragons. And our theme for our siblings camp was like reality TV. So we named that session Critical Role um, to kind of fit into that theme. So I'm going to go ahead and give the time to her to do her presentation and we will have like questions and answers at the end of it. All right. Thank you. Um, so yes, like, uh, Tyler said, we did I think her internet froze. <laughs> Um, we play D and D with our campers. Uh, Dragon oh, is a role-playing tabletop. You're frozen. Okay. Your internet froze. Can Better. Is it working now? Yeah. Okay. Yes. <laughs> okay. So to repeat what I said, uh, uh, like Tyler said, for one of our sessions, uh, we basically just played Dungeons and Dragons with uh, our campers. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Dungeons and Dragons is a role-playing tabletop game. It's a lot of fun and role-playing with the campers is definitely something that uh, I think was really fun and was really enjoyable and was really something easy to do over uh, Zoom with the, you know, having to do virtual camps because of COVID. Um, and I have a PowerPoint that I'm going to share. Just get it pulled up here. Okay. 
Um, hopefully it will load quickly. So do you, what are you Sorry. doing in Hawaii? Uh, I'm studying marine biology. Nice. Yeah. All right. Um, let's hope this works. Hopefully it should. Sorry, I live in a cinder block, so sometimes the internet is very slow. So while we're waiting, or if you want, so I can share this. Um, but while we're waiting, has anyone in the group, have they played any kind of D20 system role-playing game, um, such as Dungeons and Dragons, or there's a handful of others? No? Okay, perfect. That just tells us that we, what kind of explaining we need to do um, for, uh, jargon and whatnot. Zoe, do you want me to share it? Because I have it pulled up, I think. Yeah, that might be easier. My, I live in a cinder block, so the yeah, internet is very slow all the time. <laughs> um, Sydney, can you hand me my dice really quick? Okay, so I will share that. Okay, can everyone see that now? Be good. All right. So, as Tyler said before, the session uh, we that we had with role playing we called uh, "Critical Role," um, and this is uh, this PowerPoint is essentially just ways to do the same thing for your camp. Um, so for the role-playing basics, you really only need two things to role-play. And those two things are dice and your imagination. Everything else is really optional. Um, a lot of systems have things like maps that just um, have like where people are in a battle. You also have miniatures, which are like uh, little, figures for your characters. You don't really need those. Again, only two things you need are dice and imagination. Um, and your story that you choose to go with can be as complex or as simple as you want it to be. Um, it doesn't have to be super long and super narrative or anything. It can be just a short, short simple story. Uh, the story that we used for our session in camp, uh, we had the campers, essentially their players went out, their characters went out and they got a thing for the kingdom and brought it back. And it only took an hour, an hour and a half, roughly. Uh, pretty short, pretty simple, pretty fun. And role-playing is also super fun for everyone. Um, even if you've never played before, um, it can be really fun and it can be really exciting and really interactive. So Dungeons and Dragons is the most commonly known role-playing game. It's probably the one that you uh, at least hear about when people talk about role-playing games. Um, if not, the one that comes to your mind. And the reason for this is because uh, it's the most popular and it's very easy uh, to learn, which makes it really good for new players. Um, traditionally, it's set in like a medieval time with elves and magic users and warlocks and all these different kinds of things that you think of when you think of the medieval times, but you can set it to be in any sort of genre you want. Um, like you could set it to be space pirates. You could set it to be people living in New York enjoying life in New York. 
all sorts of different things. Um, and it runs on a really simple D20 system. Uh, for those of you that don't know, uh, a D20 looks like this. Very circular, very round, has 20 sides. Um, and so when a game runs on a D20 system, the D20 is the dice that you will use the most for your game. So these are some tips and tricks uh, that we used and learned uh, from playing with our campers. The first thing we learned is that smaller groups are a lot easier to keep track of and they can get through a story faster. When you have more people, combat, things like combat, uh, plan, plan making and all those things take a lot longer just because there's a lot more people there trying to do things. Smaller groups, there's just less people to have to worry about that kind of stuff for. Um, we also learned that having someone uh, to help the GM or the game master keep track of combat order allows for smoother combat. So combat order is essentially like people's turns in combat. So like this person goes first, then this person, then the next person, then the next person. Having somebody else besides the GM keeping track of that, especially over virtual um, resources keeps that combat moving a lot smoother um, because, and especially with the larger groups, it helps that just keep it run a lot smoother and less chunky and clunky. I think uh, Cooper has a question. So. Yes, Cooper. Can I ask you, when you uh, talk about small groups, what does small group size mean to you? Or what's a good group size? A good group size. Um, I would think would be around like 10 or lower people usually. Um, 15 and lower is like a moderate size. Anything higher than 15 is gonna be a little bit more complicated. Yeah, and one of the things that we did when we initially set it up was we had our color groups set up in, in two different groups. And then I ran a game and Zodia ran a game over the Zoom. But we, with the, as some of you know, from holding virtual uh, camps, the participation is 100% like it would be at a in-person camp. So we ended up not needing to do that with ours because we just didn't have as many kids log on for the whole part of camp. Um, but even so, I almost wish with, with our first group, we would have separated them um, because they were younger kids and had a harder time um, not, or had a harder time understanding not everything needed to be killed, um, if that makes sense. Because yes. um, in this game, a lot of people that play fantasy games think they're like a video game where you just run around and kill everything. And in this game, it, that's not necessarily the case. Like, Sometimes you have to talk to people. Sometimes you have to trick them or sneak around them. And our younger kids were just like, well, I'm going to go fight the, the bad guy, you know? And we're like, well, okay, hold on this. You do realize what you're, what you're seeing here. This thing is like four times your size. And he's like, I don't care. We're going to go kill him, you know? And where our older group was more about try to figure out the solutions compared to, to just cutting everything up. So Yes. Yeah. And again, an age, age, age range is definitely something to also keep in mind uh, because the younger kids, you'll probably want a game that's more combat based and to where they can just go out and fight things. Um, but with older groups, it might be more fun for them to have to try to figure out puzzles and figure out riddles and figure out how to get through an obstacle without just destroying it. Um, this probably a very yes. um, silly question because I'm so unfamiliar. Are they playing as teams or are they playing as individuals? So each player will have their own character, but they're all in one, uh, what is called a party or group. So, so it's everyone's on the same team essentially, but everyone can make their own choices on what they want to do. 
Yeah, so a lot of it depends on the game master and how they're running things. Um, I've been in games where we are all in the same party, but some of us, their agenda is to work against the group. So it just, it's the one good thing about this game is it's so open-ended that anything that the game master says is appropriate works. Um, and it works on both ways where if you want it to be more simple and not so vast, you can put rules in place where they can't do things, where they have to work as a team um, or else they can't get the things done. Yeah. Yeah. What he said. <laughs> um, the next bullet point is trying to keep all the players involved in the game. This is essentially just making sure that everyone has the chance to do something, whether that's attacking something or putting their input on for a puzzle or adding to the uh, plan of action. Um, just, just a good way to like keep everyone involved and keep everyone engaged, making sure nobody feels left out because we do wanna make sure that everyone's having fun, especially with these kind of games. It's really easy for people that are maybe a bit quieter, not so outspoken to just kind of fall back and to the, you know, hustle and bustle of all of it. So just making sure everyone's involved can make it a lot funner for everyone. Um, uh, this plays a lot on your staff as well. If your staff members get into it, the game will go better for the kids. Um, because if you have your staff members just sitting back thinking, oh, this is kind of weird and, and dumb and I don't understand what's happening. The kids pick up on that just like every other activity that we do. Um, so really getting them in, uh, on board with it and having fun with it is a big key. And this last bullet point on this is what is referred to as the rule of cool, which is kind of what Tyler was talking about earlier um, about um, if the rule book doesn't necessarily say anything on it, but your GM thinks that it would be fitting for the world or for the players, or that it'd just be really cool and fun to try out, go for it. Makes for some great moments in the RP or the combat and just makes it a lot funner for everyone. Um, like there's times when like, you're like, can I throw my sword at the thing that's flying away and try to knock it back down on the ground? Absolutely, throw that sword, do it. And it just makes it for a lot of fun. Um, but yeah, so those are just some uh, things to keep in mind uh, when and if you uh, play with your campers. Again, especially over the virtual uh, Zoom or whatever other virtual means you have to do. Now, Dungeons and Dragons isn't the only role-playing game that there is. There's a ton of these games out there. You just have to look for them. Um, these are a few of them uh, that I know of that are pretty fun. The first one is Honey Heist. This is probably one of my favorite games besides D&D, just because it's a ton of fun. This is a game where essentially all your players are bears just regular bears, and you're trying to obtain a huge cache of honey. Um, you get to go through all these different experiences of how do I get my bear looking bear into a group of humans without letting them know that I'm a bear. It's really fun and it has a really simple system of a D6. D6s are regular everyday dice that you think of, the six sides, all that. Super easy, um, makes for really quick games, really good one shot, quick games, one session games. Um, and it's really fun, especially for younger uh, players because it's just ridiculous and fun. Uh, Star, Roll Star Wars role-playing is exactly as it sounds. It's a role-playing game where you play as characters in the world of Star Wars. Um, and you, you know, you go and you fight Darth Vader, or you fight off the rebels or the Jedi. It's a ton of fun. 
Uh, and it again uses the D20 system similar to Dungeons and Dragons. Um, and then Call of Cthulhu, um, I know it sounds really scary and it is a little scary, um, but it's only as scary as you want to make it. The base around it is that your players are investigating and exploring um, this mystery of these monstrosities coming to life and most likely trying to stop it, if not cause it to happen. It's a lot of fun and it's really immersive and has great story elements and again uses that same D20 system as, or not the same, but similar D20 system as Dungeons and Dragons. And there's a multitude of other games out there. Again, all you have to do is search for them. So for those that don't know, Cthulhu is um, like a horror god in mythologies. That's why the game is, is more focused around a horror type of, uh, of a genre as opposed to fantasy or science fiction. Um, he, if you ever see anything that's like a guy with an octopus head, um, looks a little bit like Davy Jones from the Pirates of the Caribbean, that's usually a Cthulhu reference. Um, it's again, in, in a big nerd culture, it, it's a common name. But for people that aren't into uh, gaming or things, that it's just uh, another character that um, causes mass chaos in the world. So, yeah, um, yeah. So yeah, those are just some other games that I know of that are super fun. Okay, uh, now these are some resources that you can use uh, to make uh, your own games or to just find resources on other games. So this first one here, Incarnate, uh, is a map making uh, website. You can go on uh, and you make a free account and you can make just these cute little maps for your players. Um, Sorry, I have some of those that I can show yes. here. I just got to pull them up in a different slideshow. They're super fun, super cute. It's really easy to use. It's essentially just putting stickers on a thing. Um, I like it a lot because even if you don't like pay for the premium account, which I don't, you can still do really cool stuff like this. Um, you can make these cute little maps um, that are really nice and fun. Um, and one of the things that we did um, is we shared the screen like this, and then we would use the annotate um, to put markers where characters were at. So like we'd say the stars were um, the characters and the check marks were, or the hearts were the bad guys. So that way they had a reference of kind of where everything was in the room or in the, in the map. I um, mean, it was a really easy way to do that um, because sometimes when you play this, uh, you'll have maps out on your table and you'll have little miniatures to kind of keep track of everything. So this was a way to, to incorporate that into it. Yeah, but again, you don't need to have a map to play. You can just theater of the mind it and be like, and theater of the mind works especially well for like newer players that don't quite understand the mechanics of it yet. Cause they can just be like, I'm gonna run up and attack that dude with my sword. And you're like, okay, cool, roll to hit. Or I'm gonna stand here and shoot him with my bow. Cool, roll to hit. Um, but just maps make it easier to like keep track of like where things are if you want to do that. Um, just like, a, oh, this thing is here. So if you're here, that obviously isn't going to work. But again, and, not a necessity. And if you, you know, if, once you start learning about it more, you can also do things where like, oh, your teammate is standing in front of the monster. So if you shoot an arrow, you have a likelihood of hitting your teammate as opposed to just hitting the monster. Or you can um, make your rules as, 
friendly spells and friendly range shots don't hurt the team unless they do a critical fail, which is rolling a one on a d20. Um, yeah. Which usually has negative consequences um, because- Usually means that you failed whatever you're trying to do. Re yeah, really, really bad. Because <laughs> it's, it's the lowest you can be. It's the lowest roll you can get. And so it's the worst you can perform. Uh, the next resource that we have here is a website called Roll20. Roll20 is a great uh, resource for uh, role-playing games because it essentially is a virtual tabletop for you. It has kind of like a Zoom thing where you can see all the different people um, in little windows and you can talk to each other. It also has a chat function to where you can just chat. Um, it also lets you put in like formulas for the chat. So if you don't have like physical dice, you can just say roll one D20 plus two and it'll figure that out for you. It'll randomly figure that out for you. Um, it also has uh, map features on it so that you can create a map as a GM and have your players only see what you want them to see on that map. Um, or it also just, it just basically, when you don't put a map on it, it's just a white screen with the grid marks. So you can just put little markers on it to show where things are. You don't even have to create a whole map for it either. It's really great. Um, you do need an account to use it. Um, if you want to GM, if you want to play, you don't. Um, but it's a free account, so you don't have to spend any money, again, unless you want like a premium account. Um, but it's a great website, it's a great resource, a um, lot of fun. Uh, the next resource that we have is Zoom, uh, because Zoom is a great way to just see people virtually. Um, and that's what we used when we uh, did it with our campus, we just met over Zoom and then had pictures. Um, really easy, really simple. We all know how to use Zoom at this point. D&D <laughs> um, &D Beyond is another resource. D&D &D Beyond is essentially uh, just a D&D &D website. It has all the books uh, that is with D&D. &D. Um, it has like the player's handbook, um, dungeon master's guide, it has all those things. Uh, but you do have to pay for that one. You don't have to pay to go on to the site. There are things that you can look up on the site that don't cost money. But if you want those books, if you want to look at those books on those sites, um, on this site, you will have to pay for it. But don't worry, because we have our friend Google, uh, where you can literally just search D&D &D Player's Handbook PDF and find it for free, because the internet is amazing. Um, and you can find a whole bunch of different rule books like that too. Uh, that's how I found Honey Heist's rule book. It's just one page PDF of all the rules on it because it doesn't need many rules for that game. Um, and there's a whole bunch of others that I know that I've gotten just looking up a PDF version of it and just downloading it. Um, and then our last resource here uh, is uh, one that Tyler actually found and used, but it's essentially one that creates uh, pre-made character sheets. Uh, Tyler can explain that one a little bit more. I don't know. So yeah, so so this is um, Wizards of the Coast, which is the company that owns the rights now to Dungeons and Dragons. They it's part of their website where you can print off blank character sheets, and they also have I think twelve already rolled up characters that you can print those sheets off for free. Um, so if you wanted to do this and you really don't know where to start, you can print those sheets off so everybody has a character. Um, that's what we did just so I didn't have to roll up individual characters. Because um, the fun part, again, with this game is I can give you two identical character sheets and they're two different people in the game because that's not what makes the character what makes the character is the player they just have the similar stats and and equipment um and so that's how we did it is we sent 
uh, the kids and our staff members each a character sheet with a character and a description of it. Um, and then told them, while well, you're thinking about it, come up with a backstory, come up with why this uh, character is what the sheet says it is. Um, and that's really the fun, where the fun of this game comes is it's essentially a choose your own adventure book that no one knows how it's gonna end because it all depends on what kind of choices you make. Um, and if your game master is a really good storyteller, um, it goes a lot further than if they're kind of boring and monotone and, and stuff. So um, just some things to think about. Um, I'll share. And with that, with that storytelling and nobody knowing how it ends, um, if you do GM or even if you just play, honestly, uh, you do have to be ready for some of those like, I wasn't expecting that. Yeah. Let me figure out how that's going to work. <laughs> because yeah. there are things that happen that you're like, interesting. Like when you convince the goblins to give you the map for shinies. It's great. <laughs> um, so this here is another presentation that we shared with all of our campers and staff for it. Um, it broke down, this slide here breaks down what each dice looks like um, so that when you tell them in the game you need to roll a d4, they can, they knew that that dice was the one that looks like a pyramid. Or um, as opposed to looking and counting the sides, each dice looks different. Um, and like Zodia said, in a d20 system, the 20-sided dice is your go-to. Um, anytime you ask someone to make uh, something check or an attack or an initiative, that's the dice that they roll and tell you their, that number. Um, this here is what our character sheets look like. Um, this is a simplified version of a fifth edition Dungeons and Dragons character sheet. Um, if you Google fifth edition character sheets, um, there's all kinds of stuff that can be more, even more complicated than what this looks like for someone that's never played before. Um, this is a pretty simple sheet that um, kind of tells you where everything is and is easy to be a one page look to answer questions. So the green part here is um, character information. So it has your class, your race, um, and your experience and level and alignment. Um, the next section is this purple section. That's your abilities. And I know it's really small. When you print them out, it, you can see it a lot better. But this tells you, um, if I ask someone to roll a strength check, this character would roll the d20 and then add a two to whatever they got. To it, and that's what the little plus and uh, minus is on on those squares. Um, the next section is their health and their armor um, section. This one is their attack and spells that they have. Um, this one is features that come, and and all this stuff was. I didn't have to come up with any of this stuff. This was all on that. Um, Dungeons and Dragons page with the characters. I just typed them into this uh, sheet. This one is their equipment. Um, and down here is the treasure and gold that, and uh, money that the character has. Um, we also gave them a sheet that looks like this. And this is what those sheets that you find on that Dungeons and Dragons website will look like. It has all the same information as the other sheet. It's just more in depth of what different things mean. Um, and the, when me and Zodia played, because we had a lot of people that had never played before, we had a copy of all of these sheets with us. So that way, if they had a question, we could look it up and tell them what it meant. Um, again, if you're planning on doing this and this looks super complicated, it doesn't have to be as complicated as this is. It, it all depends on what you want to do with it. And um, like Tyler was saying, that page looks really overwhelming. 
it's essentially just saying what those things do. So it's essentially just saying, you use this to cast spell. You use this ability to cast spells, or this is how much damage your weapon does. And just it's just things like that, just in detail. Yeah. Um, this here, we sent all of the characters that could cast spells their own spell book. Um, which tells them what each of the spells would do that they had ability to use. Um, again, if you don't want to have magic in your world, you don't have to worry about spells. Um, and then we showed them this was kind of just a picture of what Wizards of the Coast says these things look like, um, just to kind of help them get into the frame of mind of what if my character is a half orc, I look like this big green, you know, monster ready to fight. If I'm a, a halfling, I look kind of like the Hobbit from the Lord of the Rings books. Um, just to kind of help them with their uh, get into the into imagination. And then this was a slide that we shared with them that kind of shows what the different classes are. Um, so like a rogue class is, is thieves and, and assassins and tricksters, where a barbarian is someone that goes out and just hack and slashes, basically. Um, and so those were, the, those were the slides that we shared with them uh, to get them kind of a basis of what we were going on. Um, Trying to see the chat, but. Uh, Beth says, thank you so much, Lydia and Tyler. Okay. I'm going to sign off and get ready Perfect. for the fundraising session. Um, I will have to start that session, Beth. So give me just one second. Is there any other questions that we have um, before we have to sign off for this one? Yes, um, Cooper. So we actually, we did run D&D &D, uh, this past year um, during virtual camp and then actually extended it past virtual camp. The problem that we ran into was none of us who work uh, at camp know anything about this. Uh, so we relied on uh, DMs, dungeon masters um, that from our community who could devote time to this. How easy is it for someone like myself who has not played ever to get up to speed enough to be a DM and actually run something and or teach other people how to do it. Do you enjoy reading? <laughs> I mean, yes. Because um, the books, so the core books are out there. That's the stuff Zodi was saying you can find for free as a PDM or PDF. You can also purchase them at most retailers now um, mm -hmm. and they're the basic rule books for the game um, again the books it's not necessarily a novel but they're thick and they can seem overwhelming but if you just break it down and read the first i think it's the first chapter first, yeah the first chapter tells, tells you how, you how to, to play the game um, the rest of it is just icing mm -hmm. on top of it because it it is a complex um system if you play it exactly to the rules of Dungeons and Dragons. I don't know a single person that plays that game to the strict <laughs> rules of it because it, it is really, really complicated. Um, yeah. A lot of times it's mostly just people um, when we play just uh, sitting around and telling a story and saying what's going to happen. And they come up with what they want to do. And you say, okay, that works for me. And we'll see what happens with the dice. Um, there, there are things like initiative basically means who goes first in a battle. Um, and then the rest of the stuff is really, it's really explained in the first chapter of that um, book. And if you have questions, feel free to reach out to me. I can do my best to help with that. Um, we've, we've gotten several people that we know started playing, um, who had no, no understanding of it. And they all agree that once you start playing, it's easier than explaining how to play it. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that 
uh, yeah, the first chapter in the book, The Player's Handbook, really is what you need to know how to kind of play and a little bit to DM it. If you know how to play, you kind of know how to lead others in playing it, which is essentially all a DM does is just lead others into playing it. Um, the Dungeon Master's Guide that I talked about is really just, again, like Tyler said, icing on the cake. It's just how to expand your world and how to, um, it's just essentially being more immersive in the world. But if you just want to know how to play, really all you need is the player, that first chapter of the player's handbook. You don't even really need the full yeah. player's handbook. And, um, and, and I but have- Honestly, as long as you can tell a story and you can tell people, what do you want to do? It's really just as simple as that. So, and I, we do have our adventure that I can share with everyone. Um, and it is a sheet, it's a docs, a Google docs uh, thing. And it has everything broken down to the character, the monsters that they meet. So you only need that sheet. It has their hit points. It has all that stuff on it. So you just read the sheet. And when they come to this, they fight the monsters and you keep track of how many points it takes to kill those monsters and stuff like that. I'm guessing there might be like something on YouTube that you could just watch to get a sense of it yeah. too, right? Okay. That, yeah, that would be helpful for me. Just, yeah. yeah. There's, okay. I, the show Critical Role does have things on YouTube called Handbook or Helper that essentially breaks down the player's handbook and tells you like, this is what this is. This is what this is. This is what this is. Um, but yeah, it is, I will say, probably not child friendly. <laughs> The show, critical um, role. the show Critical Role and anything that they produce is probably not child friendly. So that would definitely be something to watch, not show your campers um, if they're underage. Um, but definitely you could watch it to kind of get an idea of like what different things are. Okay, well, thank you guys for joining us and thank you Thanks, Zodia you for, for uh, taking the lead on this. Um, we're going to go ahead and sign off and start the next meeting. So we'll see you on that next link. Nice to meet you, Zodia. Take nice care. Nice to meet Thank you guys, you. you too.